Hello everyone, and welcome to another counter build, this time against Arch-Tempered Valhazak. We're starting off by eating at the canteen. I want to show you guys what I do. I'm checking for active ingredients in the last row. I don't have any. I'm going to go ahead and use a voucher. Alright, there's the voucher. And now I can eat however I want. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to take Bombardier. That's really important. I don't really feel like attack's going to help me here, so I'm going defense. Also, I'm going to go ahead and take the Polisher as well as the second skill. I think that kind of helps the gun lens out a little bit. Not too much, it's not really important. All right, Handler's got her cute little Christmas outfit. Time to go beat up on Arch-Tempered Valhazak. He said some pretty mean Yo Mama jokes and it's time to beat him up for it. Now, we want those tickets, we want to build his armor. Gonna pick up some of these. <laughs> Even when I have everything in the game, I'm still gathering things because, oh, this is a good one. That's Excite Shroom. That one's good. You want that for Farcasters. But yeah, even when I have everything in the game, I'm still collecting things. Alright, we got these little torch pods. The game really wants you to use torch pods. I'm just kind of throwing them down. I'm starting out with the Wyvern Fire here. He didn't like that. And now he's going to run off like a little bitch. Okay, so Valhazak has run off. I, I haven't put on the Temple Mantle yet. I'm going to do it at the last second, I guess, so that... I get the most out of it. Oh, and look at that. He hit me with the beam. Notice uh, protection did proc here. I have protection on the build. This is really why I'm basically always going to be recommending a gun lance because you can build for explosive damage. I'm a big fan of explosive damage if you guys haven't figured that out. Whenever you go explosive damage, you only need three levels of artillery and you're pretty much set on damage. And then the rest of your skills can go into defense, which is why it's such a casual, friendly setup. But in this case, you even get good damage, right? Like you're not... You're not going to be speed running, but you're going to get good damage out of long shelling anyways, right? And that's what we're using today. We're using, uh, once again, the King Gold Exploder. And that's a long shelling gun lance, one of the best in the game. I think it is the best. And then I have two health regen augmentations. That's really important here. Valhazog, Arch-Tempered Valhazog, the reason he's so crazy dangerous is because the effluvia is going to melt your face off. You've got to have health regen. Okay, so it doesn't matter what weapon you bring into the fight, unless you're going to kill him in like three minutes. If you don't have health regen, you're going to get effed, man. So health regen it is. I think my third augmentation is a small decoration slot. We'll see it at the end. The build's at the end. Here, that, that beam just missed me. I wonder why. You can see, for most of this video, you're just going to see me uh, poking him with the shelling over and over and over again. That's it. We got the temporal mantle. We got the rock steady mantle. Those are both going to be a big help here. Those are my preferences. If you don't have the, you should have the Temporal Mantle at this point. Everybody on the PC, you've got the Lunastra event. It's really not that hard to unlock, right? I, I, uh, correct me if I'm wrong on it, but I think the Temporal Mantle is easy to unlock. And then if you don't have the Rocksteady Mantle, you could go with the Vitality Mantle. That'll work as well. Vitality, it, yeah, Vitality is pretty good. The other option is the Health Booster, right? Your Health Booster is going to be pretty strong option as well. So Vitality, the way it will work is it'll absorb a certain amount of ticks of damage from the effluvia, whereas Health Booster will just, in general, as long as you can stand in it, you're going to get your health back. So it kind of depends on what situation you're in. If you're in a multiplayer situation, go Health Boost. If you're alone, Vitality Mantle might be better if you're alone. It's hard to say. This is really a fight where health regen is a big advantage. So another thing I have going on here, since I'm playing by myself, and I always recommend playing by yourself, Unfortunately, the game just gets really hard if you're playing with randoms, so play by yourself or play with friends. If you're going to fight an Arch-Tempered Monster, I mean, you can go into multiplayer if you want to help some randoms. That's what I would say, but if you really just want to get through this guy and get his armor done, I would do it by myself. I just think it's so much faster. You get so much more control, and you get your Palico. And my Palico is going to have the Vigor Wasp spray. There we go. Uh, it's, it's so hard to remember so many names, right? Yes, my, my Palico has the Vigor Wasp Spray. Here I am, nabbing it right there. It's just like a free heal that sits on the ground. <clears throat> That's the Vigor Wasp station, and sometimes the Palico will come over and throw a, you know, a heal on top of you. That's really great. The trick is to not panic. You know, if, if you don't panic and you don't let Valhazak land any of his moves on you, and of course you're going to need Guard Up because uh, Valhazak's beam attacks will go through your shield. So if you don't panic and you've got Guard Up, your Palico has the Vigor Wasp Spray. Just relax. Eventually that Palico is going to run over with the heal and you're going to be okay. You're going to want the health, health regen augmentation 
on your weapon, like I said earlier, you're going to be okay. So here he is trying to use his big slamming move. You want to guard that. <laughs> if it lands, it actually deals a bunch of damage and throws you back. I, I did one test run before this. Ooh, a lot of flinching. You know, I'm really impressed with the long shilling gun lances. They cause the monsters to flinch so fast. So they're, they're just, I don't know. I feel like they're one of the most underappreciated weapons in the game right now uh, are the long, uh, long shilling gun lances. I don't know. I don't see people use it too often. I think if you really got a tough monster, this is a go-to weapon. That as well as the light bow gun and the heavy bow gun for sticky ammo. They're just really hard to do poorly with. They're, they're way too strong in terms of defense and offense combined, right? Like speedrunners like to think only in terms of offense because the goal is to juggle the monster, get done with the monster as fast as possible. It's really impressive. Uh, but if you're not ready to play at that level, this sticky ammo and long shelling gun lance, and, and maybe wide gun lance as well, depending on it, what you're fighting, like Kieran, for example, wide shelling gun lance is preferable for Kieran, in my opinion. Yeah, it's just the explosive damage, artillery is so easy to build. All you need is, if you have the decorations, great, but all you really need is the charm. Although, you would, you would hope uh, Capcom finally releases some armor that has artillery and the magazine, Deck, uh, magazine skill? Yeah, I, I think... Oh, the capacity, right? Capacity boost? There we go. Yeah, you would hope that... You would hope that Capcom eventually releases those. Well, you don't necessarily need them, though. You don't necessarily need them. Alright, so Valhazok has ran off. Time to go catch up with them. This is a great time. If your weapon needs sharpening, sharpen it now. If you need to go back to the camp, go back now. Uh, I'm in pretty good shape. Really, it hasn't been much of a challenge, has it? We're just kind of, you know, blown up our little explodey lance in his face. He can't do a lot. Uh, one of the things I was doing, I was testing the bow against Kieran the other day, Arch-Tempered Kieran, and I ended up not recommending it. I think that the bow's really powerful against Kieran. I think it is. But if you're not already pretty familiar with it, I, I don't think, well, I don't know. It depends. I, I haven't decided how I want to think of this counterbuild series. Should I be showing off the top three easiest builds, do you guys think? Or should I be trying to show off the best build for every weapon? I would love to hear what you guys think of that because showing off a best build for every weapon class is going to be a whole lot more work and it's gonna pretty much crowd up my, oh, I'm not sure how to describe it. It's gonna it's gonna fill up my YouTube feed if you wanna, if you wanna call it that, right? Like you guys are gonna get pinged with 14 different videos from me if I made a video for every weapon class, right? So that that's kind of why I didn't make one for the bow for Arch-Tempered Kirin. I felt like the sticky ammo and the wide shelling was uh, much more effective, but at the same time, maybe, I don't know. I'll, I'll leave it up to you guys. You, you guys tell me what you want, and I'll think about it on my end as well. So there we are. We got a knockdown on Arch-Tempered Valhazak. It's great if you can break one of his parts, especially his forearms and his head. He really, oof. It really does uh, get knocked down pretty fast if you can break those parts. I've even thought about builds where I brought... Oh, ooh, I'm almost dead there. This is where your max potions come in handy, guys. This is why you want to bring two max potions as well as the crafting materials needed to make more max potions. I've, I started doing that on all of my item loadouts. I highly recommend it now. It's really powerful to do that. So you can have more than, than two max potions. But yeah, let's see. I haven't made up my mind how I want to work with the counter builds. It could just be me repetitively showing off sticky ammo builds and gun lance builds. Or it can include most of the weapon classes. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. This is a game where each monster will have different, like, uh, matchups against the weapon classes. Some weapon classes seem to have an absolute advantage. That's why I'm showing you the long shelling gun lance. It has an absolute advantage. It doesn't matter what you're fighting, you're going to get this very consistent, very easy method of fighting a powerful monster. And then you have weapons like uh, maybe the greatsword, where bigger monsters who are slow, you know, you might, or, or their heads are available more often, you're going to have a better matchup against that monster if you're using a greatsword. But if you have a monster who flies a lot and uh, you know, he, he moves quickly. You might miss a lot more of your, more of your shots with the grip. Oops, there's my phone. <laughs> that kind of spooked me there. But yeah, you're going to miss some of your great sword charge-ups, right? Some of your charged attacks. There we go, Valhazak down again. And I am... 
I'm using the, uh, shoot, what is the name of that word? Wyvern Stake? I think it's the Wyvern Stake. I just used the Wyvern Stake combo there. Oof. Trying, I'm trying to resharpen. You'll notice I have, uh, what is that, the brown sharpness bar? And that means that I'm, I'm finally losing damage on the shelling, so it's very important at that point to go ahead and resharpen your weapon. We're pretty far along in the fight at this point as well now. I, I wonder why Valhazak just kind of standing there. He didn't think I was going to attack him or something. Notice I'm kind of hiding under his legs at this point. Uh, if you were trying to fight him with like the dual blades, this will be a very important strategy for you, or maybe the sword and shield. Uh, it depends. I mean, it would be nice if you could hit him in the head, but more likely you're going to be hitting him in the chest and the forearms, and his hind legs are fairly safe for repositioning. Lucky for me, I have a big-ass shield, so I don't worry about that. Plus, the long shelling just has crazy good range. So what am I worried about? Odo Garen there kind of interrupting our fight. I think the reason Odo Garen didn't do a turf war with Valhazak is because I had a knockdown on Valhazak and that screwed it all up. Like, some AI script says, get into a turf war. And then, so he came in and the AI script probably checked for it. And it said, well, you can't, he's knocked down. So it said, okay, now do the other thing. <laughs> Which is probably run around and annoy, annoy the game economist. <laughs> but he's gone now, and I think we're getting real close to the end. Well, I know we're getting close to the end. There's that big attack again. He's going to pretend to go to sleep for a little while. You have to be careful with this move, because sometimes when he wakes up, he charges a beam, and that beam has a pretty strange trajectory. And you don't want to get caught in it because it will one-shot you. You'll notice I didn't really get hit by the beam other than the opening of the game. And I survived that. Protect... Well, what is it? Protection 3? That proc for me? That really helps. But, man, if you're not built for defense against this guy, you're really going to get destroyed by just one of his beam attacks. It'll really knock you out fast. Okay, so you guys saw he was trying to escape earlier. You could tell because my radar went white. That means that he's de aggroed and he wants to go to his nest. Let me recommend not letting him escape to his nest. If you fight Valhazak in his nest, he's going to go to sleep in a big pool of acid water. You don't want that. So try to keep him in the fight. You can use, I believe, one flash pod if you want. Uh, the other option, of course, is to make him flinch before he gets away, which is what I've done. And again, I think I said earlier in the video, it's very easy to cause flinching with charged long shot shelling. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're doing charged long shot. Uh, shelling. So we're going to get a lot of flinches on him. And there he is. So he's trying to de-aggro and go to his nest again. Doesn't even make sense. He's going to go to bed now. <laughs> okay, and that's it. He is down. I want to thank you all for watching this. We're going to take a look at the build in a moment. Here we are. Yep, you're, feel free to go ahead and copy the build. Anyone on the PC should be able to build this. It's actually a very cheap, easy build to put together. And it's one of the reasons why it's most of the time going to be my first recommendations. All right. Well, I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.